It was the 29th of November, 1943, a sunny evening. The 96th Bomb Group, part of America's legendary 8th Air Force, were on a bombing run to Germany, Bremen. Anti-aircraft fire was thick and heavy, and Ricky Tiki, a B-17F flying fortress, with tail number 42, 30359, is heavily wounded. A well-placed flag strike cuts off the tail in a violent explosion, and the gunner, a young American airman, Staff Sergeant Eugene P. Moran, was still inside. He could hear the thunder of the engines disappearing in the distance, and his ears could feel the rapid drop in pressure, which indicated that he was losing altitude quickly. Eugene then turns around and realises what had happened. He was on his own, without the rest of his plane or crew. The gunner grabs his bullet riddled parachute and attempts to escape, but the escape door would not budge. The next option was to leave through the fuselage side, but it had been distorted with sharp twisted metal blocking his path. The gunner does his best to escape, but there was no way out. The flak had cut the tail almost perfectly to stay upright. The fins of the tail produced sufficient drag, allowing it to behave almost like a glider. The Germans thought it was some sort of new British aircraft, and the BF-109s as well as the flak batteries take shots at this mysterious object floating in the sky. Eugene still had a couple rounds of ammunition in the back guns and opens fire on the approaching enemy aircraft to fend them off. The Germans fire and tear countless holes into his body. There was nothing Eugene could do about it. The tail glides down from the clouds and hits a tree upon landing. Nearby, a Serbian POW, who was also a doctor, hears a loud metallic thud and rushes over to the crash site to investigate. It was evident that this was the tail section of a B-17, but the rest of the plane was nowhere to be seen. He could hear a faint ghostly call for help as he neared the crash site. <coughs> Astonishingly, there was someone still alive inside. A tail gunner, drenched in blood and curled up in the corner, holding his head with his hands. The POW wondered, how had he survived an incredible 28,000 feet fall without the rest of his plane and what happened to his crew? The POW, being a doctor, quickly notices that Eugene had multiple bullet wounds and he was losing blood at an alarming rate. He attempts to speak. Eugene Nagano mentions that he could feel his skull moving around and that it had been crushed upon landing. As the tail hit the tree, Eugene was sent head first into the heavy 50 caliber machine guns, which shattered his skull. He was in extreme shock and couldn't move. Most men would never be alive after being shot multiple times and having their skull crushed. The POW was amazed at how tough this young American airman was. The German guards soon spot the POW and rush over with guns in hand to see what's going on. The Serbian explained to them that he wasn't going to survive much longer like this and that he would personally help fix him up. They agreed to move him into the camp and provide some medical assistance. The POW spends the entire night surgically repairing his wounds, hoping that Eugene, who was now unconscious, would live to tell his incredible story. The next day, Eugene was awake. He would go on to make a full recovery, but this was not the end of his nightmares. Sadly, he would spend the next 18 months being inhumanely incarcerated in POW camps over Germany, Russia and Poland. He would survive solitary confinement and be relocated on the infamous Hell ship on the Baltic Sea. Following this, Eugene would endure a 600 mile forced march from the February of 1945 to April of that year, during one of the coldest winters on record. Finally, on the 26th of April 1945, he would be liberated at Bitterfeld, Germany, weighing only 128 pounds and discharged on the 1st of December that year. The USA would award him two Purple Hearts, an air medal with a gold leaf cluster, the European Theatre Medal and the Good Conduct Medal, making him one of the most decorated airmen of World War II. Following his service during the war, he would return home to America and marry Margaret Peg Finley, raising nine children at Soldiers Grove, a village in Wisconsin. This was however not the end of his service to his country. He would spend the next 20 years as a firefighter and another 30 years as a fire warden. On the 12th of October 2008, 
the village would dedicate an entire street to his name, called Eugene P. Moran Park Drive, for his dedication to his country. The veteran would pass away on the 23rd of March, 2014, at the age of 89, being one of the toughest American men to have ever served during World War II. Only 3.6% of the viewers watching this channel are subscribed. It takes countless weeks to write and produce these videos, but it takes just a second of your time to click that red subscribe button. It's completely free, but helps us out immensely in bringing this content to you. Thanks for watching, stay safe.